Over the last handful of years, my wife has taken up the Olympic sport of vegetable gardening. Okay, it's not really an Olympic sport, but it does take an incredibly high level of dedication. And it's been so interesting to watch her learn over the last handful of years and to learn alongside her that there's just so much more that goes into it that, you know, in my naive way of just thinking, you know, well, you put the seeds in the ground and then fruits or vegetables, you know, however long afterwards, right? It's, she's learned so many different things along the way and, and shared them with me. Some of the things she's learned and shared with me is, you know, you have to put more seeds in the ground than maybe you originally thought. You know, not everything's going to grow at the same rate or pace. And and there's there's all these different predators out there that that are wanting to be take part in your vegetable garden as well. I know this last summer we had Vinnie the Vole uh, that visited her vegetable garden. And as exciting as it was for the kids, it was not exciting for my wife. She was very upset and concerned after we bought Vinnie the Vole, which the kids thought was amazing. They, that she caught him and then we released him into the wild not near her vegetable garden. But my wife was concerned that Vinnie the Vole wasn't a bachelor, that he actually might have had a large family. And so we kind of went through this and that she's dealt with all kinds of other things that have tried to stop her dream of having you know this, this incredible harvest in a vegetable garden come to a reality. And so much of our life has this parallel alongside vegetable gardening or gardening and, and this idea that, you know, if we invest our time, if we if we if we're gonna sow our time into something that we want to know that there's an outcome or what the outcome might be or what a possible outcome is. You know, if we invest our money or resources into a into an investment financially, you know, what's our return on investment going to be? If we if we invest our time into a job or a work or a business, you know, and we're putting in 40, 50 hours a week, you know, what's our return going to be for that? And I think those are those are very real questions. It's just into, you know, in a part of our life, in and out of a part of our life, it's it's interwoven in our life, I guess I would say, of this idea that if we're going to invest our time or sow into something, we want to know that there's a possible outcome. Over a handful of videos, we talked about this idea of gratitude and gratitude in our relationships and circumstances and, and praise. And, and, you know, one of the byproducts of focusing on gratitude in our life is that we start to recognize that there are some things that we're grateful for that I've recognized are actually seeds that we can sow. So, you know, I'm grateful for my time that I have and the health that I have. So I actually have, time is actually a seed that I can sow. You know, I'm grateful for the relationships that I have or the words that I get to use, but start to recognize that some of these things are seeds or gifts or talents or abilities, you know, gifts you've been given, skills that you're developing. They're seeds that can actually be planted and, and grow towards God's call in your life. In the sewing principle, I talk about four pillars. And the first pillar that I talk about is, is what? It's recognizing what do we sow? So when I talk about sowing and reaping, you know, this is where I talk about recognizing and having gratitude for our blessings because what we sow is so often what we're grateful for. But I talk about our time. I talk about our thoughts. So, you know, how important those thoughts are that we're going through our brain every day, that we're sowing those into the right direction, the words that we use. And I talk about, you know, our finances, of course, and our, our skills and our gifts and abilities and how each of those is a seed that can be sown on a daily basis that is actually going to move us towards God's will for our life. You and I have this ability to choose and to make decisions on a daily basis with intentionality. And I think that's incredibly powerful. It's an incredible gift in and of itself is our ability to choose and our ability to make decisions. And so when we when we take that, you know, we're always sowing. And I think that's one of the things that I had to realize is that, and, and you know, I hope that you realize is that we're always sowing. So even right now, you're watching this video and you're sowing, you're learning and you're growing. So you're, you know, you're kind of sowing into yourself. Hopefully you're being uplifted and encouraged and hopefully you're perspective is being expanded as you sow this time. But we also sow, you know, physically, like you lay down and you go to sleep and sleep for the night, you're sowing into the rest and restoration of your body. And I like to joke that is unless you have kids, then sowing sleep is just a dream and something that can be something that can hopefully happen in the future. But it's it's always happening. And when I think about the importance of the daily, we have to take it right into the minutia of our thoughts and getting intentional about those thoughts, you know, so I've talked before about in the past about dealing with different levels of anxiety and how you you can't hold two thoughts at the same time. So can I be intentional about the fact that I'm going to sow thoughts of gratitude, sow thoughts of blessing, sow thoughts of positivity, which leads to me, you know, sowing words of gratitude, sowing words of positivity into my life and into the relationships that I have with other people. All of this sort of compounding over time. Talking and thinking about intentionality and sowing with intentionality. If we look at our skills, gifts, talents, and abilities as seeds that can be sown, can I ask you a question? Are you sowing those seeds into God's call in your life? Are you sowing those seeds positively towards what God is calling you to and the harvest that he's hoping to reap through your skills, talents, and abilities? 
If you are, great, if you've been able to identify those skills, but if not, why? And I'll speak, you know, if I can speak honestly with you, of course, I, I look back over my life and there's been many years where I look at it and go, you know what, I wasn't sowing the gifts and talents that God's given me towards the growth of his kingdom. I've maybe been sowing into things that I, that I didn't need to or or not even, not sowing them at all. You know, like kind of pushing them to the side and being like, well, I, I don't know what to do with that or not uh, abusing it for yeah, in a worst case example, you know, like not actually taking it as importantly as it should be and allowing it to become a strength. Personally, and I, I don't know if you and I are similar, but I've found that there's been many years where I can't answer that question and say yes, that I have been sowing my skills and gifts and abilities towards God's call in my life. There's been too many years where I couldn't answer that with a positive. And I, I often thought that, you know, if I didn't use those skills or gifts, that maybe they would go away. But I think they're just sort of like unused seeds that are sitting in this storehouse. It's sort of like your potential, like you have so much potential, but not necessarily actually sowing it into the right direction. And gifts and skills and talents are things that need to be sown into. You know, it's one thing to be called to sort of lead on your worship team because you believe that you have a gift and musical ability. But if you don't actually practice, if we're not actually practicing as we, as we, you know, towards getting better at something, you know, if I don't practice writing, if I don't practice speaking to you or working on what it is that we're sharing and working on uplifting and encourage people, there's no opportunity for us to get better. So saying that we have a skill or a gift or talent or ability actually requires more dedication from us than, than maybe we originally thought. We actually have to dive in and go deeper and sow more into that area of our life so that we can focus on our strengths so that it actually can grow God's kingdom in the way that he has planned. I think I had a similar sort of naive idea that I had with, you know, vegetable gardening where that I have with skills, talent that I had with skills, talents and abilities whereby, you know, it's like, well, can't I just take that skill and go out into the world? It's my gift, right? That's the gift God's given me to use. So can I just go out and, and, and it'll be, it'll be there. I fully sort of realize that gift or skill or ability, you know, put a, put a seed in the ground and it produces a harvest without any hard work. Well, we, I think we know, we all know, <laughs> hope, you know, life doesn't really work that way. And, you know, if we're, if we have these skills, talents and abilities, and we aren't actually out there sowing them into them so allowing them to grow to become strengths then they're just seeds that are sitting in our storehouse they're just seeds sitting there they're just sort of potential um, waiting to be used but not actually being used just because you have a gift if it's not if you're not actually sowing into it becoming stronger in it working on that allowing it to become a strength for you then it's not actually we're not actually growing it into what God is calling us to it's not actually moving us towards his call in our life and it's taken me a long time to realize that but as I realize that I hope that I can encourage you in that and that it, it, there's something so incredibly powerful that can be done through that because when we do so with consistency when we do so with persistency when we do develop these strong strengths and, and gifts and talents that God's given us and use it to further his kingdom. Incredible things can happen. Absolutely amazing things. It's in those incredible, amazing things. That's when God produces his harvest. And it's not on my time or our time. It's always going to be on his time. You know, we do the sowing. God does the growing. But uh, if I can encourage you in this, if I can encourage you to take a look at the, your, your life and, and the part, different things that we're grateful for. And can you look at those as seeds? And then if you look at them as seeds, how are you sowing those seeds? Or are you sowing those seeds? You know, and we'll talk more about this next week. But, you know, the, some of the how and the what and the why we sow. These are the other three pillars of the sowing principle. And I'm so excited to share the sewing principle with you. It's coming out on November the 19th. Um, yeah, I'm very excited to have that link to share with you hopefully soon. Um, have an absolutely awesome day and I look forward to chatting with you again next week.